Welcome to Lions Foundation of Canada Dog Guides. Hi, I'm Flynn, a two-year-old Labrador Retriever training to be a dog guide in the service program at the Lions Foundation of Canada Dog Guides. The Foundation's mission is to assist Canadians with a medical or physical disability by providing them dog guides like me at no cost. You might be shocked to find out that the Foundation receives zero government funding, and so it relies on donations from individuals, service clubs, foundations, and corporations. It costs about $25,000 to train and place each dog. Come with me for a tour to see what we're all about. My journey began at the Lions Foundation of Canada's breeding facility located in Russell, Ontario. This is where future dog guides are born and where some of the initial training occurs. At Lions Foundation of Canada Dog Guides, we breed standard poodles, Labrador retrievers, and golden lab crosses. My mom and dad were selected as parents for me and my siblings due to their temperament, trainability, and health history. From the day I was born to about seven weeks old, this was my home, slowly but surely developing into the handsome boy you see today. Once I turned seven weeks old, I got to meet my foster family. My foster family is responsible for me until I'm about 12 to 18 months old. They get the pleasure of loving me, teaching me basic obedience, and socializing me in as many environments as possible. Puppy program staff members provide support to the foster families and teach puppy classes to help everyone on this journey. Once I was about a year, I was recalled back to the Lions Foundation for training as a dog guide. My foster mom was sad, but knows I'll do great things for people in need. Welcome to Lions Foundation of Canada Dog Guides Training Facility, or as I like to call it, Dog Guides University. I've made it! This is my new home until I'm matched to my handler. A handler is the person I will be assisting. At Lions Foundation of Canada, there are seven dog guide programs I may be chosen for. Our first program is Canine Vision. This is for people who are blind or visually impaired. Our second program is Hearing for people who are deaf or hard of hearing. Our third program is Autism Assistance. This is for children who have Autism Spectrum Disorder. Our fourth program is Service. And this is for people who have a physical or medical disability. Our fifth program is Seizure Response for people who have epilepsy. Our sixth program is Diabetic Alert. This is for people who have diabetes with hypoglycemic unawareness. And our last program, our seventh one, is Facility Support for professional agencies assisting individuals in traumatic situations. Depending on what program I'm selected for, I'm trained to perform a set of skills that will be useful to me and my future handler. In my final stages of training, my future handler and I will train and live together at the Oakville facility for two to three weeks, depending on the program. This helps to ensure that we will be good working team with a strong bond and ready for our new life together. This is the lounge area of the facility. This is where our clients relax and eat when they're here for training. We do our graduation ceremonies here to commemorate the new dog guide teams created. At our graduation ceremonies, we invite sponsors and foster families to celebrate the dog guide they helped come to be. This is a very special event and very emotional for all involved. This is a perfect time for a demo. Oh, there's trainer Jesse with Jackson. Let's go learn about the Diabetic Alert program. Let me introduce you guys to my friends Jesse and Jackson. Jesse is an instructor for the Diabetic Alert program. Hi friends, welcome to the virtual open house. My name is Jesse and I'm a Diabetic Alert dog instructor. And this is Jackson and he's a Diabetic Alert dog in training. Jackson's job is to help Canadians with diabetes that have hypoglycemic unawareness and that are insulin dependent. Jackson's skills are very important. He's trained to alert me when my blood sugars drop below a 4.5 by pawing me. He's also trained to go get my glucometer kit in the event that I need to test myself. Jackson's also trained to go fetch um, a juice box or glucose tap so I can help myself bring my blood sugar levels back up. And Jackson can either go get someone in the house and bring them to me, or he can activate a life alert system that would either call 911 or a family friend so they could come to, come to help. We train the dogs using saliva samples that are donated from people that have diabetes. Jackson's trained to smell the sample, or smell below, and then paw to alert me. Yes, good boy! And then he gets his paycheck. 
So now that Jackson's pawed me to tell me that my blood sugar levels are low, I'm going to ask him to fetch my glucometer kit so he can retrieve it and bring it back to me so I can test. Jackson, fetch kit. Yes, fetch kit. Jackson, fetch kit. Yes. Good boy. So now that Jackson brought me my glucometer kit and I know that I've tested low, I'm gonna ask Jackson to activate the life alert system so we can call for help because no one's here at home to help me. Ooh, Jackson, alert. Yes. Please check telephone connection. Please check telephone connection. Well, um, so for me, about uh, five years ago, I had a, a car accident and uh, as a result, or ever since that accident, um, I, I no longer can sense when my sugar levels are high or low. I, I quite literally have zero idea. I was working with some people. I was working with a, a speech pathologist uh, because I, I had an injury in, in my brain which affected my ability to speak. Uh, affected, it just made the left side of my tongue kind of dead, which is weird, but so I kind of had to learn how to talk again. The speech pathologist who was coming to see me had said, because I had had some pretty severe lows with her around and she was like, whoa, this is a lot. And she yeah. started doing research and found dog guides and said, you know, this is something you should really talk with your doctor about. It sounds like this would be really great for you. And my kids were pretty young, uh, you know, five years ago. Mm -hmm. So I talked to my doctor, uh, told him about dog guides and, uh, he did a little bit of research and then uh, wrote out some information that I, I guess you guys require yep. uh, from your doctor to, you know, to kind of prescribe that this would be very uh, needed for my client or my patient rather. And uh, I went from there and uh, just thank goodness. I'm so happy <laughs> to know of, of you guys and mm -hmm. the, the Lions Club, you know, thank you so much for, for uh, being a part of this. It's, mm -hmm. it's changed my life. For me, she's just, uh, she, she gives me a sense of, you know, like of calm. Like I don't have to worry uh, about going low or high because mm -hmm. she's, there, there's, I can't remember a time where she missed my sugar being low or right. if it's high, you know, my sugar tends to run higher than lower, I guess right. would be the, the general kind of line where I'm at. But uh she likes to eat, so uh, she makes sure she gets me every time, and it's it's just it's just uh, amazing. Awesome. Come here. Come here. Oh, oh, good girl. Here, you can get up on the couch. Ross is one of our super diabetic alert dogs. You're doing God's work here. You know, it's it's really amazing. You're you're especially like the young people. You know, you're helping out so many young people, which is so wonderful. This is the Dog Guides Vet Clinic. Here, we provide assistance to our foster puppies and dog guides in training. Lions Foundation of Canada is responsible for all vaccine, vet visits, neuter and spays of foster puppies, and dog guides and training. We trim our dog's nails and groom them all here. Additionally, we provide follow-up support to our graduates for the entire working life of their dog guide. Our follow-up process includes phone and email communication, in-home visits, community education, and community networking. This is carried out by both our vet office and client services staff. Hey, this is service instructor Amanda. Let's watch her as she's working on skills training with dog guide and training, Harris. Hi guys, my name is Amanda. I'm an instructor in the service dog program and this is my friend Harris. He's a black lab and he's gonna show you some of the things that he does for uh, to help people in the service program. So our clients in the service program are, are people with a medical or physical disability that require these dogs to help them with a lot of physical tasks, things like picking things up off the ground, opening and closing doors, pushing automatic door buttons, um, fetching things out of the fridge, all things like that. You can imagine being in a wheelchair, using a cane, those things can be really difficult. Harris. So the first one I'm gonna show you today is called a fetch. So I have just glasses case here. So I'm gonna drop it. Harris fetch. Oh. Yes, good boy. You'll see that he delivered that right to my hand. No chomping, no chewing, because obviously if that's your brand new iPhone, you don't want it coming back with teeth marks in it, right? They can fetch things like credit cards, keys, anything down to the size of a nickel, and anything large enough that's safe for them to fetch, okay? So it can't be too heavy or anything like that. Um, we'd also never ask them to fetch a knife that you might have dropped 
or the cheeseburger that just fell off your plate, their dogs, that one's probably not coming back to you. Here is. The other really important thing that these guys can do is they can open and close doors, drawers, cabinets, all that kind of stuff, even the fridge. So I'll show you what that looks like. Here's heel. Here's tugs. Tugs. Good boy. Good boy. And there's a water bottle there. I'm gonna ask him to fetch. Here's fetch. Yes, go boy. Good. Good job. And then we can also close the door. Here's Good job. Here's Nudge. Nudge, go boy. Good boy. Please it. And another one of our most important skills is something called a bark for help. Now, in many cases, if our clients live alone, uh, maybe they've fallen, they can't uh, get to a phone, they can't call out for help, they can ask their dog for help. Okay, so I'll show you what that looks like. Harris. <laughs> help to him and he's gonna bark continuously until somebody comes to help him help me sorry or until I tell him okay and that's a little bit of our service program with me and Harris hope you guys have a good day <laughs> for over 34 years the pet value walk for dog guides has been a vital national fundraiser held in approximately 300 communities across Canada now more than ever Dog Guides is relying on the generous support of its donors and partners to continue to work towards its mission. Thanks to our title sponsor, Pet Value, all of the proceeds go towards providing more dog guides at no cost. In addition to being the title sponsor to the Pet Value Walk for Dog Guides, Pet Value donates food and treats for dog guides in training and food for our foster puppies. These puppies are at an essential development stage, and just like humans, they need a well-balanced diet to help fuel that development. Performatrin and Performatrin Ultra provide those essential nutrients needed for a happy, healthy, and growing dog. And the best part is, Performatrin and Performatrin Ultra are made right here in Canada. They are also our title sponsor for the Pet Value Walk for Dog Guides, our biggest fundraising event. Plus, all of the donations from their annual calendar go to sponsoring teams. They have sponsored over 137 teams to date. Make sure you pick up your Give What You Can calendar in their stores this fall. Let's go find my friends, Alana, Adele, and Jemmy. It's time for another demonstration of another one of our dog guide programs. Oh, hi there. My name's Alana and I'm an instructor with the Autism Assistance Program here at Dog Guides. The dog that I brought with me here is named Jemmy. Jemmy is one of our dogs in training and she's a cross between a Labrador Retriever and a Golden Retriever. She's such a good girl. Yes, good girl Jemmy. In the Autism Assistance Program, we train dogs for children who are between 3 and 12 years old who have been formally diagnosed on the autism spectrum. Different from the other programs here at the school, our clients are not the main handlers of their dogs. It's typically it's a parent. So you can see over here on Jemmy's harness, there's several metal rings. Two of these rings hold a handle. So the parent or handler will hold the leash. On the left side is the dog, and on the dog's left side is the child. Holding the handle of their own dog gives the child a sense of independence they may not otherwise have. They're able to walk their own dog. They may not have to hold mom or dad's hand while they go out in public. It also gives them a sense of responsibility for their dog, which is such a special feeling. Something that our dogs are trained to help with with their children is to keep them safe. This is one of their most important jobs. The metal ring up here at the top of Jemmy's harness has a good girl a ring attached to it. And the dogs are trained that when they hear the command halt or if they feel tension on that line, they lay down immediately and use their weight to stop the child from being able to move any further. This can stop them from running towards bodies of water, running towards the road, whether they're feeling overwhelmed and just trying to get away, or if they're seeing something they're interested in, just going for it. Some people on the spectrum have issues with 
have issues with evaluating dangers in their environment, and so this helps them stay safe when they're out and about. Let's see if I can find my helper to see if we can do a demonstration of this. Go, run, run. Halt, halt. Yes, good girl. As you can see, Jemmy laid down immediately when she felt the pressure on the line and given the command halt. And <laughs> she's much bigger than Adele, so Adele's unable to get anywhere. Good girl. Good. Another command we train our dogs to do to help with anxiety is called hugs. And hugs provides deep pressure, which is benefits many people on the spectrum. Jemmy. Jemmy. Are you looking at Adele? Good girl. As you can see, Jemmy's moved her body on top of my lap and is using her body weight to provide deep pressure. Good girl. This can be done while sitting, in a chair, or on the ground, and is oftentimes used in public or in schools. The last thing we're going to talk about today is how our dogs help their children with sleep. Many people on the spectrum have issues with sleep whether it's problems falling asleep or staying asleep. And our dogs are trained to go into bed with their children and sleep with them through the night. This helps reduce their anxiety and has a friend with them in their room while they're alone overnight. Many parents joke about a term called musical beds. So either the parents are going to the child's room or the child's going to the parent's room, but either way, no one's getting a good night's rest. I've heard many stories from our parents of the immediate effect that this has on their children. Uh, we actually just saw a child recently who graduated with their dog right before COVID hit us here in Ontario. They said the first night that they brought their dog home, he slept in bed with their child and it was the first time their child slept through the night for his entire life. So it's pretty incredible. You can imagine the benefit to the child to sleep through the night and also to the parents and the whole family that everyone's getting rest. It's, it's really fantastic. Thank you so much for coming and seeing us in the Autism and Assistance Program. I hope you enjoy the rest of your tour. Hi, we're the Maddies. Marcus, Jordan, Carrie, and my husband Greg, who's filming this short little video, and Tori. Tori is Marcus's Autism Assistant Dog. Marcus received Tori back in May 2019. And we are so grateful to receive Tori because she has helped made such a huge impact in Marcus's life. Marcus no longer wanders off or runs away because of Tori. Tori keeps him safe. Before this global pandemic, we were going to the movie theaters, we were going to the malls, and then Marcus likes to walk her proudly and he no longer runs away. We are very grateful to the Dog Guides of Canada to help provide our son, Tori, who helps keep him safe. She's even helped us during these struggling times during COVID. When my son's world was shut down, when they shut the school, she was here to comfort all of us. And we're so thankful and grateful for Dog Guys of Canada. She's a blessing. Thank you. Facility support dogs undergo similar training and are partnered with professional agencies that provide support to individuals who've experienced traumatic situations. Here we have a facility support team, Suzanne and Carson, from the Eagle Tower Victim Service Unit to tell us more about this program. Hi there, so this is Carson and I'm Suzanne. We're with Eagle Tower Victim Services in White Court. I know it's a little hard to see, there's his beautiful eyes. Um, this is Carson, so we got Carson a year ago from the Lions Foundation and uh, he assists with um, victim services and clients who have to testify in court. And uh, he also is a huge part of our detachment and the officers. So typically on any given morning, most mornings, he comes in and he does a complete run around and says hi to everybody. Um, for some of the officers who's, ha who's have a had a bad night, he, he goes right in there and just, oh my God, he, he, he has a special place in all the officers' uh, hearts here. And, uh, one of the other things that he's famous for is he has a spot in the office where he lays on the rug and when the officers are headed out the door on a call they have this thing where they have to touch him it's like a good luck thing and uh, out the door they go and they just it just is a good luck thing um, Carson typically assists also in the court system so he helps young people who have to testify 
um, any given time, he typically sits or lays at their feet. He also helps them before they have to testify just to kind of get them calmed down. Um, he does very well with it. I've watched him because I usually sit with him and he, when they start to become emotional or unfocused, he just leans into them in such a way that just calms them down, wraps his feet around their, his feet around his, their ankles and uh, it just, the difference is, is huge. Um, our court system, are ama they're amazing. They have welcomed Carson with open arms. The Crown prosecutors love him to death. The sheriffs in all the courthouses that we go to, um, typically, if I come in without Carson, where is he? They they love him a lot. He's done he's done a lot for them. Um, just greeting them when he does come in, it just sets him at a different tone. Oh, Carson's gonna lay down. There he is. Uh, and finally, the judges, they also love Carson. There are many pictures that we have of Carson with other judges, um, and we're going to get more. We could almost do a wall. Uh, there's something about Carson and his look and his demeanor that just draws you in so much, and you can't help but want to touch him, want to feel him, want to hold him. He, he just has such a, a calm... Uh, Thing about him it's it's quite nice he's very well loved here he has a family that takes him in to decompress once in a while they take him on walks he's just loved by everybody and we're very thankful to have him I want to thank the Lions Foundation for giving us this amazing gift um, we love him one more look at Carson say bye hi Welcome to the kennels. This is my home while I train for my career as a dog guide. The kennels are bright, open, and airy, which leaves lots of room to move around. As you can see, there's plenty of space for me to have up to two kennel mates. This helps with my socialization and comfort during my stay. We have an area for play and rest, and another area for doing our business. The dedicated kennel team work from early morning to late at night, making sure all my needs are met. Meals are served, treats are given, there's an endless supply of water, and our space is kept sparkling clean. I wake up bright and early to start the day of training, but don't worry, it's not all work all the time. I have plenty of downtime in the evening to play with my friends, give a toy a good chew, and when nighttime comes, we cuddle up together for some much needed rest. Hi Kayla, do you mind telling us about what you're doing here? Hi there, I'm Kayla and I'm an instructor in the Hearing Dog Guide program. This here is Ray. She's currently in training to become a hearing dog guide. Our dogs are matched with clients who are deaf or hard of hearing. Their job is really important because they increase awareness for the client and they also help increase their safety and independence. Our dogs work to seven different sounds in the environment. So that includes a doorbell, a door knock, a fire alarm, a wake up alarm, a phone, a name call, and a kitchen timer. When our dogs hear a sound, they make physical contact with their handler by using their paws. Then the handler asks them, where's the sound? And the dog will lead them to the source of the sound, whether it's somebody knocking at the door or their phone ringing. The only exception is the fire alarm. When our dogs hear the fire alarm, they still alert their handler, but instead they spin a few times, four to five times automatically, and it's a visual cue for the client so then they know it's a fire alarm. And then they safely exit their home or wherever they are. One of the sounds our dogs work to is the telephone. So when Ray hears the telephone ringing, she will alert me and I will ask her to show me where the sound is coming from. Then she will lead me to where the sound is occurring. So right now she's acknowledging the sound. She's alerting me. And I'm going to ask her, what is it? Yes, good girl. Good girl. And it's very important that they're direct with the sound. So I want her to nose point towards the sound so that I know it is the phone that is ringing. Good girl. The next sound we're going to introduce is name call. Name call can be used inside the home or outside. For example, if a family member is calling the client's name in the home, 
Or outside, if say the client is in the grocery store and they've gotten ahead and someone's trying to get their attention. One important thing to note with our sounds is that they have to be continuous. It has to be repetitive in order for the dog to alert. So when calling the client's name, we call it continuously. The dog is not trained to the person's specific name, but they will learn it over time. But rather, they are alerting to the continuous sound. Kayla! 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 What, Kayla? What is it? Good girls. Hi, Katie, how are you? <laughs> Good, how are you doing? Good girl. The next sound we're going to introduce is the fire alarm. With the fire alarm, the dogs will spin. Once they are fully trained and with their client, the expectation is that they will spin automatically four to five times. And it is a big visual cue for the client that this fire alarm. Ray is currently still in training, so I have to help her out a bit with her spins. So we do something called a cue, meaning I help guide her into the spin. For today, we'll just expect her to do about three spins. Good girl, spin, yes, spin, yes, spin, yay, good girl, good girl. There you are, Alyssa and Allison. We have been looking for you everywhere. Can you teach us more about the Canine Vision Dog Guide program? Hello, welcome to the Canine Vision Canada program, or CVC for short. Here in the program, we train uh, dogs to guide people that are severely visually impaired. Uh, I'm Alison, and this is Alyssa, and here we have Bella, yellow lab female. She's around two years old. So Bella is trained to stop at curbs and to negotiate the environment safely with her client. Things like um, garbage cans, benches, and moving obstacles like people and strollers. So this is the harness that Bella wears. It helps the uh, client feel where Bella is guiding them. So she is keen to wear it. So I'm going to pass it over to Alyssa. I'm going to move on to the sidewalk. Good girl. Good girl. Ready? Harness. Yeah. Good girl. Alyssa is going to give Bella the forward command and she's going to find her way back to the centre. Can you imagine being a teenager and not being able to go out by yourself just because your parents are too scared that you might get lost or injured? Well, let me tell you, it wasn't fun. But because of Hopper, I am able to be a regular teenager. When I was four, I lost my sight due to a tumor on my optic nerves. Not only did I have to go through several rounds of chemotherapy, but I had to learn how to live as a visually paired person in a sighted world. I learned how to read braille, 
how to travel with a cane. I hated using the cane and relied more upon sighted guides. But a sighted guide can't give you the freedom to go places on your own. And generally, my sighted guides were my parents, and sometimes you just need a break from your parents, you know? When I found out about the dog guides program, I was begging my parents to apply. And within a year, I was accepted into the Lions Foundation of Canada Dog Guides School in Oakville, where I met Hopper, my new dog guide. Hopper and I have been together now for more than a year, and my life has changed so tremendously. I can go places by myself without a sighted guide. I can easily and safely get from one place to another without bumping into things. Hopper provides a sense of freedom and, and companionship that you can only get with dog guides. My mobility and orientational skills have greatly increased um, from being using a cane to now. Um, I can travel more comfortably with Hopper's aid. Uh, I'm so lucky to have Hopper in my life and I'm beyond grateful that he is my dog guide. Great right, Hopper. What do you think? Is this my color? Who am I kidding? I look good in every color. You can help us provide more dog guides by shopping for items in our gift shop. Find the items I tried on and more at the gift shop link. Hey, do you hear that dog barking? That means they're alerting to a seizure. Look, there's the seizure response dog guide trainer, Julie, with Dog Guide and Training Quake. Let's go catch up with her and make sure everything's okay. and I'm the head instructor for the seizure response program at Dog Guys Canada. And here we have Quake. He's a black Labrador retriever and he's in training for the seizure response program. In the seizure response, we train dogs for people with epilepsy. So the dogs are trained to react to the seizure. They're trained to react to cues. So it might be the fall, convulsions, spasms, and the like. The dog responds to the physical cue and his job is to start barking, 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 and keep barking until somebody comes for help. Another task that our seizure response dog are trained to do is to go get a family member inside the home. So what Quake would do, he would go and make physical contact and bring the person back to me. So I'm gonna ask him, Quake, go get <gasps> Good boy, what is it? Yes, good boy. In a home environment, Eventually we would build it, the dog can go from room to room, from floor to floor, and bring the person back to their person. Good boy! So far, you've seen a few tasks that the seizure response dog perform. So they will bark um, at the onset of seizure. So that can be in a home, in a public place, um, just about anywhere. In a home environment, they can go get a person for help. Another task that they are trained to do, if the person has a lifeline system, which is a box in a home that would be connected through the phone line that the dog can activate on command. Here we use a little button for, um, for training, uh, but at home that's connected through the phone line and then the dog alerts it and it would call for help. Okay. Alert. Okay. Alert. Yes, good boy. Good boy. Very good. Good boy. Very good. Good boy. Wait, what? That was easy. Yes. Good boy. Hi there. My name is Bev Crandall. I'm the CEO for the Lions Foundation of Canada Dog Guides. And this is Emma. She's a retired guide dog. She spent 10 years working and has taken a break. So we're working hard here at Dog Guides Canada to keep things moving. We have over a thousand clients that we support virtually. We have over 300 dogs in foster care and we have about 150 dogs we're still actively training. So we're keeping busy and hope you are too. Thank you all for watching this video. Hope you found some inspiration in it, seeing everybody work hard. Despite COVID, we've been working really hard and we need your support now more than ever. 
We're continuing to work with our dogs and training them. We've taken some interesting steps using virtual technology to continue on with our training. But work is still going and we still need to get our dogs trained and matched with clients. So your support is needed now more than ever. Please consider making a donation to us. You can do that online. You can mail us a check. However you want to, to contribute is greatly appreciated and however much you can afford to give is greatly appreciated. Thanks very much. Hope you are all keeping well and stay tuned for more good news from us.